as Ron put it, up at the back on the back table, it's available and it's already uh, out of date because there's already been a mistake noted. Uh, do you want me to tell you where? What the mistake? No, no. It's already been uh, fixed up, so it's all right. Please take your uh, bulletin, your dictionary, your yeah. directory, whatever it is, and uh, make good use of it. Thank you, John. Thanks, mm. John. <laughs> The other mistake was the date of the working bee. Can you tell me that? The date of the working bee, yes. It wasn't the 17th. It was the 17th you put? No, the 24th. The 24th I put. It should have been. The 27th. Thank you. Which it would be a Saturday? That's a Saturday. Joan looked at it. <coughs> that was a Wednesday. We haven't working bee on a Wednesday. It's unusual. Nothing uh, surprises me here at Living Home no. anymore. But anyway. He so should have toes, John. So I, hey, uh, Val, you remind me. Yes, I've got a movie tickets here for the movie Breakthrough. As usual, I go for twelve dollars each, and it's a fundraiser, of course, for our uh, ministry and schools in our district. So I've still got some tickets left. Uh, please uh, hurry and get yours before they all run out. Mary Ann's not here. She wanted. Uh, she didn't know that I was preaching today. Yeah. She thought you were preaching, Neil. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, my wife, if I go to sleep during the preaching this morning, it's because my wife woke me up at midnight, vomiting her heart out. Aww. Yeah, she wasn't well at all. Uh, I think she's over it this morning, but as weak as water, as you can imagine. So, uh, think of Joan and uh, the Smiths and Neil. The reason Neil's not here is because he's had a pretty torrid week with uh, the usual. And we need to keep him in our prayers. Linda is not here for similar reasons. Coral's not here for similar reasons. Uh, not very strong on her feet, I think. So we're a bunch of crocs, aren't we? But uh, we press on. That's the theme this morning. It's going to be, yeah, whatever happens, press on. Thank you, Kim. You got it up on the screen. Let's start with a word of prayer. Oh, one last announcement. I've got it here uh, scribbled on a piece of paper. My good friend, Les Armstrong, he was a minister of Churches of Christ for many years, and he, uh, in recent years, has been up at Regis. He died the other day at 93 years of age. Mm -hmm. There'll be a funeral service on the 15th of April at Boondall, 1 p.m. on the 15th. I'll try and remember to get that in, a, in a, uh, an email dispatched to you, but if you look in the Courier Mail, you'll probably find it there too. John, he was a minister here. He was a minister here when this church got itself established way back 30 odd years ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And Ron knew him at uh, Ann Street Church of Christ. I knew him when he was at college. He was a, an industrial chaplain in those days. And we students had to do a one week chaplaincy course, industrial chaplaincy course. Let's pray. It's a prayer, in fact, that. Uh, I used when I was teaching R.I. at the Boondall School for 12 years. Well, I don't think I used this prayer for 12 years, but this is one that came up one year. O oh God, I give you today all that I think and do and say. I give you the good times as well as the bad, the times when I'm happy and the times when I'm sad. Fill me with grace and make me strong with you by my side. I can never go wrong. Amen. Mm. Simple <laughs> prayer, but I think it says it all. And uh, I guess part of that prayer would be that we would have ears to hear this morning as we consider uh, a little bit more of the Word of God. It's a big book, and it's going to take a lifetime and more to uh, comprehend it all and allow it to apprehend us. We need to pay careful attention to what it says. Because as uh, Joshua said to the people on the brink of, uh, of entering the promised land, you won't be able to keep the commands of the Lord. And they said, yes, we will. And Joshua said, no, we, no, you won't. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Well, of course, the rest is history, isn't it? Uh, a thousand years or more of... Uh, of Israel occupying the land under duress because they weren't able to keep the law of the Lord faithfully and true. And we, 2,000 years after the 
the coming of Christ are in the same predicament. We have the way of the Lord, and yet we find it so difficult to stay true to it. So this morning it's a bit of an exhortation, I guess, to press on anyway. And uh, of course we all know that a verse in 1 John 1, the ninth verse. Anybody? 1 John 1, 9. Yeah, 1 John 1, 9. Yeah. Uh, if we confess our sins, he is, that's right, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we've got to hang on and hang in there, haven't we? We're going to sin, we're going to fall, and we're going to need that uh, forgiveness from the Lord all the time, that grace that Carolyn so often mentions to us. Thank you, Carolyn, for reminding us of grace. Now, I prepared my message the other day because Saturday was going to be an, a, a whiteout, wipeout. And, uh, but this morning I got out of bed early and I prepared the PowerPoint presentation and I'm not sure whether it's going to correlate well with my notes, so I'm going to be in a bit of a dilemma here. Do I look at the screen or do I look at my notes? Well, we'll try and do a bit, uh, a bit of both. By the way, anybody seen those dogs on bikes that Ron was talking about? <laughs> that was a good one, Ron. They're getting better. They're getting better again. Did you read them, Jamie? <laughs> You probably haven't seen Jamie got home from a trip to Melbourne just yesterday sometime. Yesterday afternoon at that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, think of Jamie on the road too. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I would, and here's another one that I saw the other day. I was shocked when I learned that the electrician I hired was unqualified. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. Obviously, he did an unqualified job and I was shocked. <laughs> uh, you got it? <laughs> okay. Well, all right, now we're all awake. Uh, last, was, was, was it, it can't have been last week, it must have been the week before, I was up here at the pulpit and talking about Philippians 3, uh, where Paul considers everything as loss, indeed rubbish, compared to the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus. I want to know Christ was the uh, message that uh, we talked about from that chapter. And we talked about it being perhaps not as random a universe as we tend to observe. It seems to be quite random, quite haphazard, uh, whether we get in the car and drive somewhere or whether we stay home. And what, what difference in the world scene does that make? What about a butterfly flapping its wings in South America? and uh, disturbing the pollen out of a flower. Uh, does the flapping of a bird's wing, butterfly wings in South America, ultimately contribute to the formation of a tornado in North America? Questions we need to ask. To what extent is God in control of his universe? And to what extent does he order the uh, events that happen Maybe they aren't so random after all. Maybe things happen, even those horrible things happen at his behest. Oh, that's something to think about, and it's something we don't want to think about, because, well, when you think about God, that very same God sent his own son to die a crucifixion, death. Was that random? Was that haphazard? No, it was on purpose. So God does allow horrible things to happen, even to his people. Uh, Ron uh, drew attention to that last week, when the fishermen, the disciples, are in the boat on the, in the storm. And Peter came out to meet Jesus, believing that it was truly Jesus. And if Jesus could walk on the water, so can I, said Peter. Well, he did for a moment, didn't he? But then he looked at the surroundings, the circumstances around him, and he began to sink. Uh, I was uh, reading an article about, uh, uh, about that in, in a South African newspaper. Just, they, they said it's just evidence that uh, Peter couldn't swim. <laughs> or that maybe that Jesus couldn't swim. That's why he was walking on the water. Ah <laughs> uh, yes, the skeptics are out there. Yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, nevertheless, even if it is, in our eyes, a random universe that allows bad things to happen, like Linda this morning having uh, not so good a day, and Neil with his aches and pains and worse, and all of us, in fact, having trials in this life that we would rather not have. Uh, nonetheless, that Jesus, who is the creator of the world, is worth knowing because the end is better than the journey. I like, and uh, Neil, when you were, God forgive me, and Neil, you forgive me too, but when you were talking about Christ paying it all, and I was thinking of the agony of the cross, I was thinking of Kenny Rogers' song, The Gambler, the best we can hope for is to die in our sleep. But perhaps it won't happen quite so easily as that for most of us. We will die with pain. Growing old, for instance, isn't for wimps, they say. And we're getting there, folks, in, in living hope here. Uh, yes, it's not, not nice, is it, to even to die of old age, just uh, losing our marbles and everything else that goes with them. Yeah, but anyway, when it's all said and done, we need to make sure that our profit and loss, as Philippians 3, I'm quoting now, our profit and loss balance is on the right side of the ledger. Loss, nil, profit, Christ filled. Well, you make of it what you like, but we need to make sure that everything is loss, even the loss of our, the homes we live in, the cars we drive. Well, I don't want to go so far as uh, Job and uh, think of the loss of family and friends, tragically. But sometimes, in parts of the world, where people come to faith in Christ, that's exactly what happens. They lose even their family. All right, so I will hurry on to the slides. And uh, in fact, whenever I pick up Philippians, I think of Stuart Briscoe <coughs> preaching at Easter at Mount Tambourine a few years ago. And he was honing in on Philippians 1, verse 27. Here's the text. Let's read it together. You can follow it and I'll read it. This is the... English Standard Version. Uh, I don't know what version you've got at home uh, or, or in front of you now, but let's read this one. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain, says Paul. If I'm to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labour for me. Yet which shall I choose? I cannot tell. I'm hard pressed between the two. My desire is to part and be with Christ, which is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I'll remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. <coughs> and then he says, Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear uh, of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, etc., etc. Uh, now, uh, Paul has uh, shared that paragraph for me to live is Christ, and I don't know whether I'm going to continue to live or whether I'm going to heaven to be with Christ. That's far better. Uh, but whatever happens, let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. Well, I think if you've got the NIV there, you might have whatever happens, let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. The Greek word is monos, only. We translate it as only. Well, that's fair enough. That's simple enough, isn't it? Uh, and so Luke, the English Standard Version has uh, translated it quite literally as it stands. In other words, never mind what I've just said. Only live your life worthy of the gospel of Christ. So... There's our homework day in and day out, isn't it? To uh, live our life worthy of the gospel of Christ. But we're not able. We need Christ's help all the time. Because uh, Major Ian Thomas he used to emphasize that. I can't, but Christ can. I can't remember exactly how he puts it, but it was quite uh, succinct and quite telling. We need Christ's help all the way. So there's the first thing in uh, uh, Philippians 1 verse 27 whatever happens live your life worthy of the gospel 
And then in the second chapter, we could add the whatever happens phrase to verse 17. Whatever happens, shine. Well, I might move on. Whatever happens, shine. Uh, I start at verse 12. Therefore, and then he goes on to for the next verse, do all things without grumbling or questioning, that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. So, we're to shine like stars in an otherwise very dark world. We only have to look at Raphael Port Morayfield. <laughs> Oh, we're having fun, aren't we? <laughs> Don't start on that one. Uh, all right. And your neighbourhood, I've heard, uh, Carolyn, you had a raid a couple of years ago. I suppose you're still living nightmares over that. Oh, neighbours. We could do without them, couldn't we? Yeah, we're, we're living in a depraved, a crooked generation. And uh, yet, God has left us here to almost offend for ourselves, yet not quite. He promises to be with us. I never will leave you nor forsake us. But whatever happens, we must shine. And then chapter 3, in which I touched on a couple of Sundays ago and uh, pointed out that word finally. Uh, it's interesting that uh, this is only halfway through Paul's epistle and he says, finally, and he rambles on for another couple of chapters. That's typical of Paul. Remember the boy who fell out the window? Paul was preaching so long. Uh, the boy fell out the window. He, was, he was, uh, slept while he was sitting there listening to Paul. Don't you sleep? Oh, well, it's pretty safe here. I think you carpet on the floor. Uh, but, yeah. But I don't know that having a second look at that, uh, that Greek word, I'm not quite sure that finally is the best translation here. Yes, basically that's what it means, but uh, there's the Greek word loipon. You all think I'm loopy now, don't you? Loipon, at the end of the day you might translate it. Uh, that's a typical 21st century Australian idiom, isn't it? At the end of the day, uh, when all is said and done, or whatever else has happened, <laughs> my brothers rejoice in the Lord. I think that's the way I would translate it, using one of one or other of those uh, phrases that I've put there. Well, I'll stick with whatever else has happened, or whatever happens, rejoice in the Lord. Be happy in Him. may not have too much else to be happy about in your life at times, but uh, in the Lord, you've got plenty of rejoicing you can do because, well... He holds, he holds our future in his hands and he won't let us slip. He uh, has a, a destination for us to arrive at and boy, that destination is worth looking forward to. So, we've got three of them now. Whatever happens, live a life worthy of the gospel of Christ. And whatever happens in this world, crooked as it is, shine, shine like stars, and uh, thirdly, whatever happens, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. Well, you've got to have those last three words, haven't you? In the Lord. Because this world has so much to take our rejoicing away from us. Uh, over. But rejoice in the Lord. And he repeats it twice in the fourth chapter, verse 4. You can look at it yourself. But it was my favorite Arabic chorus when we were learning Arabic in Lebanon. Ifrahu fi rabi kullahim wa kullu aidin ifrahu. I say again, well, let me start again. Rejoice in the Lord. I'll say it again. Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Well, that's a discipline, isn't it? That requires discipline, that requires effort. Especially when the world is pressing in on us. So, that's point number three. Rejoice in the Lord. Let's sum it all up. And there they all are. There's uh, what you've got to take home with you. And that's your homework for the next 50 years. All right? 50. Uh, <laughs> as long as we've got, let's uh, live a life worthy of the gospel of Christ. 
let's shine like stars. Let's stand out among the crowd by our good works, our attitudes, the smile on our face. Let it not just be a, a religious smile, but a genuine smile of the happiness in the Lord and indeed rejoice in the Lord. And then that uh, last one, I didn't quite get there, that sermon, verse 12, I mean, but starting at verse 10, I want to know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings. I'd like to cross that out of my Bible, but it's there, isn't it? And may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. That's the goal. That's worth hunting for. That's worth selling the uh, field uh, and buying the pearl of great price or some of the parables of Jesus. It's worth its weight in gold, our destination, that resurrection from the dead. Verse 12, not that I've already obtained all this or am already perfect, are you? Oh, I'm on my way, but uh, sometimes, particularly those who live closest to you, can see the spots and blemishes. Oh, why do we get married? Our wives and our husbands are best at picking out our faults, aren't they? Uh, yeah, relax. Uh, I said to the Minister's Network on Wednesday, we have a prayer time, and uh, we're talking about... Oh, that's right, I, I won't tell you the context, but I mentioned about this uh, one-liner where... Marriage is like a romance novel where the hero dies in the first chapter. <laughs> yeah, they soon see our faults when they marry us. They marry that knight in shining armour, that, that princess. Sooner or later they find the socks lying on the floor, the stinky socks and the undies lying where they were not to be. And all the other things, we won't go any further than that. We need to... Uh, realize that we aren't already perfect as yet but we press on I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made it his own yes he went through the agony of the cross to get there what will you have to get go through to get there what will I have to go through to get there brothers I don't consider that I've made it my own but one thing I do forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call in Christ Jesus. I finish with a quote from Don Batten of Creation Ministries, and he's reminding us, of course, that we are living in a fallen world, quoting Romans 1, 18 following, and uh, that it talks about depraved relationships of all kinds and depraved behaviour of all kinds. And he was saying, in the once Christian world of the West, I can identify with that. I was born in uh, 1946 and born again in 1969 when Australia was still considered to be a Christian nation and if people didn't go to church they had a prick of conscience when they met you because they knew they ought to be there. Not anymore not anymore. In the once Christian world of the West we seem to be awash in crazy thinking. I uh, was reading the other day of uh, the suggestion by some specialists, some experts, that uh, we aren't born with our gender, we're conditioned by it. We're conditioned by the world we live in. So we are, we might be born with all the apparatus of male or female, but it's our social conditioning that, de that depends or that determines our ultimate gender. Do you believe it? Crazy thinking? Well, the article went on to point out that those same experts are saying that gay people are born that way. Well, think about that. You're not born male or female, but you're born homosexual. Mm. Yeah, and it, it, get worse, it gets worse than that if you follow that logic through. We seem to be awash with crazy thinking, which gets crazier by the day. These things are symptoms of people who have turned their backs on God, our Creator. And true. 
So, whatever happens, live a life worthy of the gospel. As much as is within you to do so, you need the help of the Spirit of God. Whatever happens, shine like stars in this crooked generation. Whatever happens, rejoice anyway in the Lord. And whatever happens, press on. The way might be difficult, and uh, who knows, we in Australia haven't got to the point where uh, we are facing death if we don't relinquish our faith in Christ. But in the Muslim world, and in the communist world before that, that exact, was exactly the cost of owning Jesus Christ as Lord, your life. Despite the fact that we might lose our lives for living as Christians, we need to press on. Thank you. I give you permission to turn it off, Kim. Thank you very much. Let's bow in a moment of prayer again. And I'll repeat that prayer. Oh God, I give you today all that I think and do and say.